Welcome, pool fans, to the Predator 14-1 World Straight Pool Championship. I'm Grady Matthews, and I'm honored to be in the booth doing commentary with my old friend John DeToro. Why don't you tell our viewers about these two players, John? Well, you got two great players here. You got all the way from Germany, Thomas Ingert, comes from this great uh, straight pool contingency of Germans. And then you got Mr. 400, John Schmidt, from the USA. Yeah, he's called Mr. 400 because he did a tape during which he ran, well, he ran 200 and something balls during the tape, but I think he set a record of 400 and something, a personal best for him, and he's just a remarkable player, but so is Ingert. This should be a great contest. Yeah, I can't wait to watch this. Ingert just played a beautiful safety here, laid the cue ball back on the back no, rail there. Personally, if the one ball is his only shot, I always like taking a foul here. Now you reverse the fact that the other guy broke the ball as good. Gee, why did he do that? He's thinking to himself, do I want to take this? John, though, being aggressive, he'll take this shot. Yeah, it looks like if he's got a natural roll on this ball, he just needs to be careful down here. But he'll fall on the sixth and possible break shot if he makes this ball. Right. And he did. Great shot. Well, he may be the best pure shot maker I ever saw. And I've been around all the old timers in my era and before that and the modern guys too, and John, I don't know, he just has such a smooth, pure stroke. Yeah, I, I got to witness, he's played on the Florida Pro Tour, the Seminole Pro Tour, many times, and uh, he does have a great stroke. I've watched him win tournaments, look at this. It's got a little funny, he's going to have to shoot the nine ball, don't you think? Well, that's the only thing shot that I could see, or oh, cut this there. He's, he's shooting a nine I ball. I like using, drawing this ball a little bit, maybe a little low left. And just cut it in, and I tried to go right smack into that ball. That's a good shot. He hit it perfect. Well, this is a little funny here. Uh, he's okay, he's got the three ball up in the corner. Very nice. Balls are spread out pretty decent here. Only okay. trouble ball might be that ten ball. Right. But it looks like it might be able to go. He's looking at that right now. You see that? And the fourteen ball is a decent yeah. break ball. John's patterns have become so much better too since he's you know improved his straight pool. Well, this is and nice, nice that we could view this on tape because you know I I haven't got to watch John play straight pool at all. I oh, really? watched him play a lot of nine ball, and I love his patterns and nine ball. But well, my wife and I had a nice tournament in 2003 at the Sheridan Hotel in Columbia. We had straight pool in one pocket, and John won the straight pool there, and he played awfully well. He's also known as the guy that beat Mike Siegel. Wow. Uh, and at the time he beat Siegel playing straight pool in the World Championship, he didn't know straight pool. So he just shot up in the air, which drove Mike to distraction. Wow. John's originally, I think, from California. He now lives in Florida, doesn't he? Yes, uh, he's been living in Florida for a few years now. Didn't he open up a room? I'm not sure if he did or not. I don't know. I haven't heard that. Now, being right-handed, I would prefer the 14 over the 8 ball. And the 4 ball in the middle of the table is a nice key ball for either one of those. Yeah, well, I think he's going to save the 14 for the break shot. I like 8, 2, 15, 4. Let's see how he does it. Well, he might, he might go uh, 8, 4, 2, 15. You're right, that's what he's going to do. He needs to be careful here that he doesn't get too straight on the two ball. It, he didn't. He's got a beautiful, clean stroke. Yes, he does. Well, I like going one rail here. I don't want to do anything too cute and get in trouble. Yeah. A little right hand English. A little right hand English come right down for the 15. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at this. Be careful. Wow. He, he came want, very close to scratching, didn't he? He wound up perfect, actually, but uh, that was a little dangerous. I wouldn't have liked that angle that he had. I'd rather accept a little more cut on the 15 ball and make sure I don't scratch. Right, exactly. You could always kill the ball to get on the 14. Look at this. Now he's, well, he's curving this ball. That's Ex a good shot. Excellent shot. Nice. Huh? Run of 14. And I tell you, Inga opened up with a very nice break shot, and John just came right with it. I like a high ball here and just drive through the high part of the ball. 
like that. See, and he I did. Well, voted forward. He needs that 15 to bounce, and he got a shot. I'm a liker of the highball break shots, John. I don't know about you. It's an old, old style of play, but almost nothing can go wrong. Well, you know, I, I kind of, I was taught that way also growing up, you know, being from New York myself. I watched a lot of straight pool. But then uh, watching uh, Thorsten Holman and play, he drew the ball a lot, and he was spreading the balls. Yeah, that's his style of play. Excellent play, play sure. yeah. But I guess it's just a matter of the shot making and uh, the abilities that these players have. That's a nice little shot right there. Yes, it is. I can't tell if that ball by the three ball goes or not. If it doesn't, he might nudge it right here. He'd uh, rather he, not. Though. Yeah, he does. He's gonna. Yeah. Well, the thing is, he doesn't want to. He may want to nudge it now, so he could. Yes, he did. Well, you can get in a little trouble here. This is funny. Now, are they playing all fouls or just two balls? I fouls? think all fouls. I well, think that makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. You know, in nine ball, my friend, I've seen guys make shots when they. Uh, didn't worry about moving the ball. They were able to hit it with a stroke that if they were playing all fouls, they couldn't. I know, I know that. In Europe, they're used to playing that, and somehow, somewhere, the American uh, pool, we kind of lost that look at the seeing that. Like you said, Grady, he got himself a little bit funny, and he was. Well, the old time straight pool players wouldn't have shot that if they didn't have to. You could get in trouble just like he did there. It got funny. You know what's funny? Uh, and I don't know whether it's the players today or the cloth, but years ago, straight pool was played in the f two sides and the two corner pockets. A pool player shooting up table was almost life and death. Uh, right, sure, especially on these four and a half inch diamond uh, pro cut pockets. You hit it a little bad, it just doesn't go. No, you're, you're exactly right. But these players are very versatile today. They play nine ball, they play, you know, they play all the games. Where years ago, I, I think the players were more specialized, whether it be one pocket or... Oh, sure. You sure. know, the strokes are different between the nine ball, you know, and the straight ball, and it always has been. Well, take a guy like Bosses. Oh, Played Joe excellent Bosses. straight pool, the nine ball was championship level, no one pocket at all. Irving Crane, same thing, nine ball and straight pool, terrific, no one pocket. But, yeah, you talk about great, great old-time straight pool players. Right. Models that, uh, that you know, the American people followed for a long time. All right, now the 12 ball is going to be his break ball. He needs to get rid of this 8 ball. Yeah, he needs to clear the path for the 7. I see that. Does he go up for the 5 ball now? I like that, and then the 7, 8 next. Right. Yeah, I got... <clears throat> When I was young, I got pleasures of watching you uh, uh, play a lot of straight pool. You've run 300s before. Oh, I, only, I only ran 300 once. One time? Uh, yeah, that, that's a great feat. I don't care what anybody says. They yeah, but the thing is that a lot of guys like me might have broke records with high runs if there was any reward for it. See, for years in, in uh, England and Australia and Canada, you got what amounted to a quarter of a million dollars if you played a perfect game of snooker. If you break the high run record, which nobody knows what it is anyway, uh, you don't get anything. So there's been times when I would practice, and I never thought I was the best straight pool player, and even I, there'd be times I would practice, and I never missed any balls and didn't keep track of them, because what, why? Wow, yeah, so. that's true. Inga just ran a beautiful, he's running 10 balls right now, and I like his stroke. I've never got to watch him play straight pool. He's a either. terrific player. Yeah, he, he sure is. Well, you know, the thing over in, in Australia, England, snooker is the only, pretty much, the only thing to watch other than snooker on TV. And they really, this I run into ladies that were 90, 75, 80 years old that actually watch the snooker and know the player's history. Well, of course, of course. Over here, it's uh, a lot different. Too many sports in this country. But it's, uh, it's a nice shot here to spread these pack open here. Yeah, and he's left-handed. And I always thought, for some reason, that I cannot explain to you that left-handers had a special affinity for the game. Been, we've had so many great left-handed players. Yeah, Steve Miserak, which, uh, you know, he was one of... Uh, world champion several times. Yeah, when I get asked who I thought 
was the greatest straight pool player ever is Mizrak because he won the world title six times in tournaments with over 40 guys that could run 100. Yeah, he was he was one of our favorites. Actually, we're honoring him, the uh, Seminole Florida Pro Tour is honoring a tournament, a $25,000 ad at the Hard Rock Casino, November 30th to December 2nd this year in uh, honor of Steve's name. Well, I may come to that. I didn't know about that. Yeah, it's... Uh, you know, Steve lived down here in West Palm Beach, Florida, and uh, you know he uh, he was a great influence around uh, a lot now of players. Now look at these balls while we're talking here, John. I don't see a good break ball here. The eight, the thirteen, and the four are too high. They're all three of them, but he can actually. He, he looks like he wants to save the the two ball, or maybe he might decide to nudge the two now. He might hit this eight ball and push the two down a little bit. And then he can shoot the three in the side. Well, he elected not to do that. Well, not only that, he got a little funny here, especially for a left-hander. He can't shoot the five ball. No, now he's going to be stuck with shooting the 15 as a break shot. It looks like he's going to go ahead and shoot the eight now. Yeah, for those of you who may be learning to improve your patterns and your break ball make percentage, the 15 is too high. If you get an angle where you can make it in the corner and hit the stack, you're hitting the 15 too thick and the cue ball travels too slowly. Uh, he may elect to take the weight of 15 now. I don't know. He got a little bit funny on the three ball. And yes, he, he is. Did. Yeah. Well, he's, uh, he's going to elect to make the five his break shot or play safe off the five. We'll see. He's running 24 balls right now. And he's got a little bit of an angle. Now, here's a funny shot. Do you like hitting just before the side? Yes, you uh, have to hit it with a lot of right. left spin on this right. cue ball. You don't want to hit it too hard, just and like that. Oh, that was nice. That was a nice shot. What a nice stroke. Yes. Very nice stroke. Now, I like using the one ball. If I can, if I got a slight angle on this other ball, go right up here and then shoot uh, the nine, and then get out in the middle of the table and use the one ball. Yeah, the one ball would be an excellent shot. I would have elected to get to that one ball earlier than this because well, oh, he, oh I see that's he went a nice right shot through like that. that that's an excellent shot right there and he seems to have cleared everything here and he's on a run of 27 okay. this is nice it clears the four makes room for all those balls to pass by and he's still got some work to do he doesn't have a great break ball this time well Let's see what he's going to like to do. He's just getting his balls off the rails first. You like getting the trouble balls out as fast as you can? When I'm playing on a tough table, I do. I believe he tried to hit that 11 ball there to knock it off the rail for a break shot and just missed it. Right. This might be a nice shot if he follows down here and then elects to shoot the 15 and push the 14 out for a break shot. I don't, he didn't get an angle for that, I don't think. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, he did. And he did. Nice call Excellent on your part, sure. See, he's shooting a three in the corner. Two, he needs to clear that uh, one ball off the rail as soon as he can right. to make room. Well, the old timers like to leave a ball in the end rail in case you got in trouble or something. You'd have a shot there, you know, if your cue ball ended up there they accidentally. Can, they can bail out pretty quick. Sure. Well, I like coming over for the eight or the six. Uh, you just go two rails here, kind of. Let's see. Like one, two. Well, he got funny, though. He didn't mean to do that. Actually, no, Greg, because he's, he looks like he can stop this, you know, just push forward and he'll land on the six ball in the side. Yeah, he's all right, yeah. But that's not the way he wanted to do it, is all I meant. Mm hmm. You know, today's play, that's an excellent run. He's on a run of 30, and he's got a beautiful break shot right now. And he, I love how he plays. Let's see how he hits this. Looks like he's going low with this ball. He's going to draw straight back to the center of the table. Yes, he did. And pretty much, uh, that's how third, you know, Thurston Holman was hitting the ball. That's the shot that the German players seem to like, where they draw the cue ball all the way back to the other mm -hmm. end rail and then back up in the middle of the table. I was always taught that was very dangerous, but they seem to make it look so easy. Right. Well, what they've done, they, they've got a lot better technically with their patterns and 
their brakes shots and so forth. Well, wasn't it? It was a different era, different cloth, different balls. Balls are cleaner. They spread easier today. Years right. ago, remember going into the pack. It was so easy to get stuck in the pack unless you had a very powerful stroke to yeah. follow and rotate the cue ball through well, the pack. Well, I kind of like the blue Simonis cloth that the Diamond Table Company uses all the time too, don't you? No, oh, I, I, I think so. It's easy on the eyes and right. you get to see the balls clear. Very nice cloth. I think this 1-7 combo is dead if you wanted to do that in a minute. Now he's doing this because the four doesn't go. He's going to shoot it straight down the corner and probably follow forward mm -hmm. like this. This is nice. He wants to get rid of the trouble balls up the table. Nice. I like his tempo too, don't you? I, this is the first time I've ever seen him play and he makes everything look so easy. Well, I always thought everything else being equal that a good quick player would defeat a good slow player. Like if you're playing Earl Strickland nine ball, for an example, and you make a mistake, he'll run five or six racks on you in two minutes. <laughs> right, I know. I mean, that's a little exaggeration, but you get my drift. But take a, then take for an example of a Buddy Hall. I've never seen him quietly go through the racks like that, but he could put a, a fast player to sleep. Yeah, well, Buddy's a little different. Buddy is so technically perfect. And you know what, my friend, I've tried to get Buddy to take up straight pool, and he just never would do it. I mean, with his stroke and his knowledge, uh, how could he not be a great straight pool player? It's just, now he can be, with that stroke, he can be whatever he wants to right, be. Right, sure. I've, I grew up, I've played Buddy many times. I had the honor of being brought up. This, this guy makes this game look very easy, very easy. And he's a run 52. 52 with a great break shot here. Again, if he draws it back to the end rail again. Well, I don't like it because he's got an angle towards that corner, but let's see how powerful this stroke no, is. I, no, yeah. he, all right, he hit that ball with the center ball. Yeah. That was that was a good shot. Yeah, yeah, he was farther down with that break shot than I thought. And racks like this where there's nothing frozen together, and, uh, nothing tied up, really. Those are shots just like that. He's, I mean, he, they, they come with these great shots. Well, I always thought the ability to adjust or come with a great shot is a big part of being a championship straight player. I remember a great match I watched one time between Jack Calavita and Mike Seal. And Mike had Jack like a 148 to nothing. And Mike missed the ball. And Jack was sitting there with his sunglasses on as he was wont to do, and he got up, got ready to shoot, and he said, Mike, you know this game's not over with yet. So anyway, Jack ran like a 70-something and got tough. He played safe. He won the next shot. He gets it to where it's like 148 each, and he, he plays Mike safe and, and leaves him really tough. And Mike gets up out of that chair after watching Jack shoot all that time and makes a long, hard shot. Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. usually uh, you sit in that chair a long time, you, your arm becomes like lead yeah, on that yeah. first shot. To come with that shot after a player keeps you in the chair a long time, that's that's special. Okay, now, he's, uh, I like the 14 or the 8. That's the best break shots for a left-handed player. Well, he's looking at that right now. He wants to see the angle that he has on this. <laughs> He plays very fluid. He knows what he wants to do, and I like that in this player. Yeah, he's electing to get the 10 out of the way first, and it looks like he's going to save the 14 for a break shot or the 2. He wants to get rid of this 12 right now. Yeah. And then it looks like, uh, I don't know if he's going to, which what, depends on how he lands on these two balls, which one he's going to use for the key ball. Right. Well, this is a matter of individual preference. I like the way he's doing it low left and just come out like this. Mm -hmm. Now he's going to use the 14 because he got the Perfect. proper angle on the 8. Yeah, let's just hit this with a high right hand English, go into the rail, and bounce out. This is nice. Very nice. It just is very clean. Yep, 66 points. 66. Very nice. Let's see how he hits this break shot. Again, he went he went into the rail very nice, but let's see, does he get a shot here? He's got uh, probably elect, yeah, well, shoot the ball on the rail. He's going to shoot this frozen ball because yes. this is an easy shot for pros. Yes. Being froze makes it easy. 
a lot of amateurs will shoot the wrong shot in yes. a spot like that. The idea is to make that first shot to right. get rolling exactly. Well, that was one of Miserac's greatest strengths. I thought he, he would get out of line once in a while. His main goal was simply to stay at the table. You know, uh, it, what was so amazing, Miserac, you mentioned him. I was in the Army, like in the 70s, when he was on that march of wins, when he was world champion. And I remember, like, 70, 71, I, I was living in Maryland at the time. And I would drive, literally drive, all the way to Livonia, Michigan, just to watch. To play in Ray Abram, or watch the Ray Not Abram even show. play, just to watch a World right. Straight Pool Championship. Right. And I watched Miserac. Uh, he actually won that tournament. He won multiple tournaments in the 70s. And the shots that he would come with, break shots from the back rail, was like, he was such a great shot maker. And... and that's a great, that was one of the great aptitudes that back then to be a, such a great shot maker. You're playing the combination here. Very nice. Three ball, looks like the three ball would be the break shot here. Great. You're going to run 75. That's, yes, this is that's beautiful. Good. Well, he's, he's looking to get rid of the four ball now. Yeah, it, the thing about the three ball is that even though he'd rather have the other, the eight ball, probably, uh, is that there's not a good key ball to get on the eight. Exactly. Actually, he wanted to get a little bit higher to get on the eight now, but now he'll shoot these two balls. Come back. Shoot yeah. the eight, 15, seven, then the three. What I like doing here is I like to leave my cue ball just about where the seven ball is to use this break shot, because for a left-handed player, that way you won't have to stretch your body across the table. Or He'll be able to get a good stroke and use whatever English he thinks is best because he'll be able to reach it. That's perfect. Yeah, those are things you need to think about ahead of time for the younger players learning straight pool. Right. This is see, this is ideal right here. Perfect. You can reach it and no problem. Perfect. What now, a there's great no choice on the English, so this requires a high ball, I think. Nice shot. Notice uh, you aspiring straight pool players. Now he kind of makes the cue ball just skip off the stack. Of, a foot or two. I like that. And you see the English that he uses, which way the cue ball. I like right. this cue ball so you can see the type of English. Uh -oh. Whoa. Wow. Whoa, he got away with that. Now that's the new cloth on tournament tables. It allows you to get away with that. The rails are a little soft. Meanwhile, he's on a run of 82. Very impressive. Very you know, impressive. I never played in or attended a 200 point match straight pool format before. And I get asked sometimes by people that would like to do a straight pool tournament, and I always tell them, you've got to have 150-point games because uh, that's the championship length. Uh, Jim Mattia one time ran 125 and out at the tournament that they used to have at the Elks Club in L.A., and Mr. Crane, Irving Crane, told him, Mr. Mattia, well, that's a nice run. It's not the championship length. So now you might set new records with 200-point games, so maybe that's a good idea. You think it's too long or... Well, you know, I, I, I seem to one. I think 150 has always been the format uh, years ago because uh, one of my old teachers used to have the record in tournament play, uh, Frank McGowan. I love Frank, yeah. Frank. You, do you remember? Yeah. I grew up in his pool room, uh, same pool him. room with Gene Baluk, his owns yeah. now. Uh, I actually used to empty the garbage cans and, and brush the tables just so I can get some free time. I was a young kid and I had the honor of playing Frank. You see, now he's playing differently than I would have. I would have taken the seven ball yeah, I would have for the break shot. Exactly. Because you got two key balls down there. All right. Anyway, uh, Frank is a guy that I liked. And uh, while you're talking about him, there's a guy who won World Straight Pool titles, and he was a terrible shot maker. But his patterns were so His good. pattern, I learned, the, well, back then, how to chip out the racks and break them out three balls at a time and play perfect pool. It was just... And a lost art, pretty much, I guess. Uh, One of the things I always liked about straight pool is that you can be behind 149 to nothing or 199 to nothing. You still have a chance if you get to come to the table. That's the great. But meanwhile, we're witnessing, a, we could be witnessing a 100-ball run here, Grady. Well, we probably are. He only needs the break shot and five more to uh -huh. accomplish that. I love how he goes through the balls with such ease and power. He may elect to go up into this stack here. No. He's 
Well, it's, uh, I don't, I don't know how he's going to break them another time. Well, if yeah. he could get on this eight ball, that would be fine. Well, let's see here. It's fourteen three eight. Is what he's going to do? It looks like, yeah, it looks like three. He might elect to break them up now. I don't like what he did. He may elect to clear these balls now. Which he is. He's going to pick these off. Well, boss has taught me that um, he liked going back and forth across the table rather than clearing one side off and going to the other. It just seemed like he had a million options. Again, that's a matter of individual preference, I suppose. Wow. Uh, it'd be hard to argue with a great player such as himself. Listen to this. One, we need one ball for the century run. Very nice. A hundred ball run. Players are clapping, they appreciate this. Right? Sure. Now you've got to be careful here because he does not have an insurance ball. I know. This is where he, yeah, he, he made sure he drew the cue ball out there, which is nice. He might, should clear this. Yes, he is. Well, now, now look at this. The 10 will be his cue ball. Or well, maybe it was. Not gonna be. It could be still. They'll elect to shoot the two now, get rid of the seven ball up there. You've got, to, you've got to be with eight, though. Yeah. But the thing is, what he should do now is then come down for the five. Right. And, and then ball. maybe get up, land on the ten, on the ten to get on the six and the eight. He just wants to make sure he can do that. He doesn't want to get funny. Yeah, I like, like I've good. never seen him play straight, but I like what I'm saying. Oh, sure. Excellent stroke. Excellent player. That's part of that Germany contingency. They just really took the heart to heart the straight pool game. and. Well, if we don't watch it, it's not going to be long until we can't contend. I'll tell you why. Last time I was in Germany, I did an exhibition at this room owner's place. And it was a Friday night. And he said, Grady, do you mind coming in tomorrow morning? Which was Saturday, of course. Eight o'clock. I said, okay. So I go in, he takes me downstairs, he's got eight gold crowns down there and a bunch of youngsters, say, oh, at eight to 15 years old, and he wanted me to work with them and give them some pointers. We don't have as good a youth program as some of these other countries, is my point. Well, I, the program that I see that the Germans have over us, basically, they eat right and they exercise. Right. That's one of the two things we kind of lost here with the American players. A combo here, right? Uh oh. Wow. I hate combinations. Uh, I cannot make a combination. I, I would almost rather bank the eight than I'm going to like, I like bank four in one pocket. The combinations are weird. Yeah. Well, he got out of what a beautiful run of 109. That's still great. And let's see here, Mr. Schmidt's at the table. And you can never count a player out. No, you sure can't. Well, some of the most popular matches of recent history at Straypool have been drawn against Alex Pagulai and gambling. They played some matches, one of them was 300 points and whoever won, I don't remember which guy won, it was 300 to 299. Wow. <laughs> I've lost I lost a few matches myself by one or two balls. Right. By not getting that one I should have. I remember that. I remember that. Those, that never leaves your memory. Right. But anyway, what we were getting back to, the 150 point straight pool match as far as being the perfect match. I remember the old days when you said Balsas and, and Moscone. Didn't it, those days they used to play blocks of 500? I don't know about that. I, in exhibitions maybe, I don't think they did that in tournaments. No, not in never tournament. Well, uh, that's why I th always thought Miserec was the best player of all time straight pool because he won in, in double elimination tournaments. Willie, while he was a great player, he played in four man and eight man round robins with seven guys that he could all, that he could beat until Crane came along. I mean, just for the most part. Irvin Crane, yes. Excellent. Well, I love Mr. Crane and Crane would, before he died, he would have told you that, you know, plastic balls are really hard to play with. A lot harder than the mud balls. 
Well, back then, the old timers, they were they also were playing on five by ten. Some of them. Yeah, I don't know. A lot of experts, including me, think the five by ten might have been easier. You have more room to work with with the balls. And if you're a good shot maker, you know the five by ten is no mystery. A guy that a lot of people thought was the best five by ten nine ball player that ever lived. Uh, Siegel beat him on the five by ten, having never struck a ball on the five by ten. So Mike played him for money back when Mike gambled, and they played about eight hours. And you could see Mike getting in stroke and learning the table, and pretty soon it was all over. Who was that? Uh, Denny Searcy. There was nobody beat on the five by ten. Well, the old I know they. they I heard stories where the old timers would say the five, the four and a half by nine was a small table. Well, right, right. But I don't know. Uh, I think that the current equipment is the best I've ever, ever played on. Well, I've been playing the game since the 50s. The, the equipment is, is, but the amazing part, you know, when you look at, like, great champions, and maybe the best player ever, like a Ralph Greenleaf, when you look at high records of 239, 240, you have to take into the consideration the cloth, the balls, and I don't even know if they had air, if air conditioning was invented back then. Yeah, and also the cues, that they could run balls with those. <laughs> and the cues. Sad excuses of cue sticks is amazing. Exactly. Well, Greenleaf was a guy that, that I never got to meet or be around or anything, and he's a guy I would have liked, because uh, he, he was an adventurer. And now, what's he going to do here? He's going to... Uh, well, I don't know if he has that 14 in the corner or he's got a combination on this 1-9. I don't think he could get to either one. Uh, well, I never know what they're going to use as a rule for push shots. Can he shoot the... Uh, well, you mean as far as shooting that 14? If he were to 14, shoot the 14, right. Can he get to this 5 ball? I don't think so. Well, he can play the combination there, whatever. I think the 5 two of cutting this in. Yeah, he may... I think he has to elect to almost cutting his 14 up in the corner. I'd rather throw it in if I knew it was a foul this? call. Well, me. How close is he exactly? Well, it's hard to tell for sure. Well, well he's, is he playing safe, Ray? No, he's, he's, he's playing a combination here. No, well, he's playing safe. How about that? Look at and and Oh, looks like an excellent safe. Now, um, in the old days, Guys didn't mind uh, scratching three in a row if they had to. They'd rather do that than sell out. That was a, uh, that was a great strategy. That now he's going to play safe and put the cue ball down on the end rail somewhere. That's no good. I don't know. He... That's no good at all. I don't like what he did there at all. He you can't leave top players on the same end of the table, nine ball or straight pool, with the cue ball and the optic ball because they're going to do something bad to you. At the worst, they got to leave the money back, right? At worst. But here, uh, let's see what John, John still needs to come with a shot. He needs to come down table for his next ball. Now, do you know if they played, uh, you know, some of these modern tournaments, they've decided they make it where it's a bigger penalty than the standard three scratches, um, you know, cost you 15 plus your three one-point fouls. Right. Some tournaments they've made it where it's uh, like 50 points and like that. So I don't know what they were doing here. Wow. Because they didn't want to have a real slow match. Well, that's, uh, that definitely you take into consideration. I haven't heard that, but I know a lot of players in the old days wouldn't mind taking 15 well, ball scratches. That was a perfect it. example. Wouldn't you rather, yes. you'd rather break them and take your chances of playing a good break shot than to give the guy an open table? Exactly, yes. Letting a, p a play of this caliber to the table, the match could be over. Well, let's see here. He uh, can, does this 15 go by? He looks like he's going to have to take his break shot here. He doesn't want to do that, so he's shooting the 13 now. And he's going to hit this easy to land on the two of the five. Excellent shot. Yeah, he got it. He wants to clear the path up in here. Well, he won't shoot the 15 now. He'll shoot this four or five ball. Mm -hmm. Now he has a little angle where he can open up the seven and the 10. Right. Now, 
Yeah, he's fine. He's perfect. And now he has a key ball with the six ball. Right. Look at this. He lined, he lined it on. It's pretty good. He'll shoot the 15, the 7, the 6, and a great shot on the 14. Right. Excellent shot. Why well, we're getting a, we're getting a real treat here to watch two excellent players. They're right. fast. They're fluid. Well, this guy, um, he might be the best nine ball player in the world too, Smith. I don't know. He, uh, if he can get it in his mind that he's got game enough for any of the Filipinos. I mean, he has no weaknesses in nine ball either. I don't see any fear in him, and he's young, Grady. Right. Sure. So. Look at this, excellent angle. Well, see, this yeah. is what I like. This is the way the old timers like to do, too. Most of the top straight pool players, more angles. Make sure you more get a nice angle. break. Be confident in this break shot and just let it follow right through the pack. Right. Excellent Beautiful. shot. Beautiful stroke shot. Now, you'll see the pros for some of you aspiring viewers at straight pool take a shot that looks off angle because they're close to it. He knows he's Ooh, that going to be good dangerous. and accurate with the hit. That was dangerous, wasn't it? Yes. He got away with it, but now he's got everything open. Now he needs to be careful here. The 6 and 15 on the far end rail might be a little funny, and he might want to get straight in on the 7 ball in a minute so he can follow down to get on those for the far left-hand corner. We haven't gotten to see John shoot behind his back. I like to watch him do that. He's <laughs> as good as Bustamani at that. Well, John's one of the American players uh, as far as exercising. Now here he goes. He eating wants to get, right. Yeah, he yeah. wants to get straight on this ball. I don't know. Well, I know he, he didn't get there. Can he get down? He's going to go into the ball. Sorry. Huh. That was dangerous. Yeah, it's very dangerous. I'm surprised. He did I that. think he tried to get to the other side, to the lower side, to play the 15. No, he went to break him out. Yeah, he tried to get on the seven where he couldn't get on the. All right, well, he's here. okay. He's recovering here. Yeah, he's yeah, got he's a shot right. here to recover. He'll come up for the six later, I guess. But the idea was to land on the 15, play the six, the 15, then come down, continue in the pattern. But he still needs to get rid of that six. Might go back up table now. This might be a good opportunity to get up there. Sure, he can. Well, there's two ways to get up there. Mm -hmm. He just draw it up there or go on rail. No, he's, he's waiting. Gonna wait a minute. I guess he'll get rid of his next trouble, the combination. Right. Well, I agree with that. If you've got to shoot a combination like this, get it out of the way as quickly as you can. You know, they might be playing all fouls because he just, he's they being are. very careful. Mm -hmm. I think they are, Brady. This is the format that they're playing with. So any balls fouls, I think it's a great idea. I think there's no reason for moving balls around. All fouls. Well, the only problem with it, as I see it, is that it takes quality referees. And uh, because if you don't have quality referees, you could, you know, a guy could hit a ball with his tie or his shirt or whatever. I had it called on me one time in a world championship match in Germany when I first got to watch Ol the one that Oliver Ortman won. And uh, I was in a match where my shirt actually touched the ball and the foul was called at a crucial point in time in the match. Are you sure that your shirt did in fact touch the ball? Well, I, there's no way I could tell, but a German uh, referee said, FOL! And mm. it cost me the match, all right. And I was playing a great young player at the time, and uh, I wind up losing that match because of that. What a nice trophy for him. Yes, he did. That's awfully easy to underdraw or overdraw. Well, in his case, he made sure he didn't underdraw it. He, he hit it this. Now he's got to draw out of this pack. Excellent shot. Look at that. Yeah. He made that look so nice. Well, what, that's what John does. He makes the game look easy. We have a treat here between these two players because I, I enjoy watching them. I wouldn't mind watching the reruns on this. This is a great right. educational uh, match right here. He's got he's. Fine here, play position on this five. Oh, uh oh, he's all right. all right. Yeah. He didn't mean to hit that ball. Again, uh, here he's going to go right into the pack here to open these up a nice follow through. He's not going to baby this because he wants to go through the pack. Nice stroke. Could have opened him up a little bit better than that, but 
he may have lost the coupon. Let me remind everybody while we're speaking here that this video and product and production is brought to you from Pro Pool Video. Jorge Torres is our host. It's a good thing George going around, you know, putting his time and energy to bring these matches to the internet. This wasn't around when we were kids, Grady. No, I wish no, it was. No. I sure. think that's why the the caliber of a play today, uh, players getting to to a, an advanced la uh, level so quick, is because of videos like this. Well, I learned probably ninety eight percent of what I know by watching and asking questions and so on. Well, me too. Of I mean, it, of Maybe. course, we had to do. Players used to say, you know. You used to ask a better player, do you want to, you know. Look at that. See, I liked him doing that because he got sideboards. He didn't need them, of course, but yeah, he straight shoot himself. Exactly. Uh, but he would have liked to come out with a break shot here. He still doesn't have a great break shot. He might try to bump the nine now. Look at this. He did. That's he tried. He his mind's always looking now for this break shot. Well, now he's going to have to use the seven of the 15. That's his really only two choices. Well, he looked at that angle at the seven because now he's looking at he can actually get to the pack from the seven ball if he lays the cue ball on a rally. And that's what he's going to try to come up for the ten ball here. Ooh. He's going to use the, the twelve ball. I don't I know if that was his intention. Or I don't not. know. I would have liked to have used the seven ball because right. you know you can hit it's closer to the pocket and could really hit the ball hard. So he's looking to stay just below straight in on the 12 ball. But this angle's a little different than yeah, the one Ingrid had earlier. See, I like going two rails off the 12 if you can get the right angle. For, see, this is what I mean. So you can't hit before the side. He'll go two no. rails, hit the back of the stack. He'll draw this ball right exactly to the lower and come around. Let's see this. He has All right, get, English here. Has to get past the side pocket. Oh, he, hit, oh, he was able to hit before it. I didn't think he could. Wow. That's a pretty shot. Wow, he hit that well. I mean, for most could... mortals, this is a halfway tough shot here. I'll cut the 11 in, I think, like that. Well, we got a nice run. He's running 42 balls now. He's answering the thing right back. Right. He decided to go into this pack. And no, well, meanwhile, he's, uh, I think he got so fortunate easy. with a shot. He, he's got a shot on the 10 ball. If he's not frozen on it, I yeah, believe. Well, I think he's got to cut this rather than throw it. That's what he's doing. Well, the referee's in the way here, but let's see. He hit it good. The referee stepped away, but he overcut it just a hair. What an unfortunate. Well, sometimes when I'm teaching straight pool, I try to tell the students that ordinarily, just as a general rule, you like to have shots where you break up balls, not be after you hit a ball and the cue ball goes to a rail. Because it's awfully easy to misjudge the thickness of the hit and the English and everything. So he got in trouble there yes, by did. going to the rail and into the stack. Well, he was trying to do a little bit too much. Now look right at this 6'8". He's got to deal with this in a minute. Yeah. Right Let me now. take a go, go ahead, John. I mean to interrupt you. Well, right now he just wants to clear this these balls out and push the eight. He might elect to move. Yeah, them, he can do it. Right which now. he did. Perfect. I just wanted to take a quick minute and, and uh, mention my new room. I have a new pool room in Columbia, South Carolina, Lexington, South Carolina. It's called Grady's. Stop by and see me sometime. I want to have some tournaments and some gambling action. So. Well, great, great. Uh, people in that area are lucky to have you. I'm sure. Well, there's never been a player-friendly room in my area, so we got all new diamond smart tables. Meanwhile, a six ball like this, uh, if you're playing on a table with five or six inch pockets, that's one thing. A table like this with the pro cut pockets, that lays a little funny. It does. I might even consider kissing the four ball in off of it if it laid right. Well, let's see the angle he got here on this floor because you want to get rid of these. Well, that's what he's looking at, either, maybe. He's going to have to move, hit the six ball with the cue ball, probably, to get that six off the rail right here. Well, he could, uh, yeah, he went a little farther than I would have wanted to. Yeah, he's going to hit very easy. And, yeah, oh, nice shot. Excellent shot. Now, 
Well, now he could shoot the... He got a good angle. Now he's got a choice which way he wants to go. Seven or the six first. He might shoot the six first. That's the six is the shot I like better. Yeah, and then he... Yeah, look, he's... He's... The seven ball, you can go one or two mm -hmm. rails off of it, whereas the six is a little funny. Excellent. And he come out with the cue ball a little bit. So he can come down for a perfect angle for the break shot. Nice shot. He'll just punch this ball down into the rail mounts a little bit. Excellent. Yeah. A little bit of right hand spin on that. Excellent. Play. He's a little farther from the break ball than I like to be with a little more angle. He'd have to be very careful here. And he yeah, was. I, I seen if he followed that, if he hit it any harder, he would have followed right into the stack. You like go drawing this ball into the pack now, Grady? And well, he might real have hard. to, um, but not real hard. I don't, I don't think he's got an angle to do it. Well, if he can go into the seven, draw up for the seven, and he'll have a oh, shot. Oh, sure. I don't know that he can do that. Mm, I guess not. Well, he's, the nine must go. Look at this. All right, the nine goes. Yeah, he's all right. Now, this is just a nice high ball, medium speed. Now, look at that nice high, high ball English grab and took. That's pretty. That's a nice shot. Right Steve, Steve Miserak used to have a way of hitting break shots with that, and yeah, the cue ball would kind of hesitate. Then it would that power draw would kick in. i am always been, you know, in favor of using a high ball because it's so much easier to control. Right. Uh, the draw ball, much harder shot to control, cue ball control. Well, he's in pretty good shape. He's got a nice break ball for a left-handed player. Mm-hmm. It's all right here. Let's see. I might use, looks like uh, being a left-handed player, would you rather have the 10 ball for a break shot or the five? Oh, absolutely, the 10 ball. Okay, so then that looks like the key ball will be his 14. Right. And the German players are not, they don't lose anything with technique. I mean, they, they, they uh, journeyman straight pool players, they run a lot of balls, they're technically darn proficient. Well, they got some good school and they have a great player over in Germany that they've all, you know, the first one to really uh, start playing this straight pool real good was Oliver Ortman. Well, Suquet, too. Suquet followed Ortman, I believe. He was during the yeah. Ortman era. I got the, a pleasure when I went to that German championships to, to, know, to you know, notice these players coming out of there. Now, this isn't ideal for the way he's gotten on this uh, key ball. Yes. Yeah. See, uh, see, I don't see I, that angle there. Did you see it, too? He kind of lost touch there with the... Uh, uh, Belinda, Belinda Bearden is a great teacher, good friend of mine. She good friend to, of mine also. She yeah. likes to hit that with no bias, she describes it. And uh, the cue ball going back for Thomas, you could see it had bias or English on it. That caused him to, to overcut the ball a little bit. Now, I think he wanted to hit it with no English at all except his draw. Now he's going to hit the... This, this is a nice little save. Yeah, he'll stick the ball on the stack. He did get a rail. Right. So he's okay. <clears throat> John's going to elect to leave him as long as possible. You know, Grady, in the old days, in this situation, I like before shooting a shot, actually taking two scratches. Oh, me too. I'd rather a player shoot this shot being on two fouls, you know, and put a little more pressure on the player if he's going to perform a shot like that. Right. Yeah, I agree. Well, th that's one area the new players could learn. They could be a little more proficient with their use of um, taking fouls. Well, as as excellent shooters as they are today, taking well, a foul is very important. Look at earlier in this particular match where Inger uh, didn't take a foul on the one ball, and he sold out. And he shot a safety that you cannot win the game with, but you could lose it with it. Mm -hmm. So that's what you want to avoid. Now, he's in pretty good shape here. Um, he'll use the ball that's between the seven and the one ball as his break ball, probably. I think that's a 14 ball. 
He might go into them now. He went. In, he moved the one at least. Right. Freed that one ball up, and he might elect to come draw right now to free the other one up. And he did. All right now, he'll use a seven instead of the fourteen. Now I'll have to move that three. There you go. Well, a little fun here, didn't he? Yes, he did. He didn't come up as high as he quite wanted to. Right, right. But being such a look at this, and he actually, it came out perfect for him because right, sure he did. got the break open at three and the 14. And being a great shot maker, that allows you to continue runs. He's going to shoot the 15 1 14. That, that would seem to be the ideal idea. And he did, he avoid not hitting that seven, drew the ball, and he is going to shoot the one. A little bit of spin with a right hand spin and played 14 in the side. Excellent. Hit this with a nice follow, bounce off the rail to back to the middle of the table and just make sure he keeps an angle. Excellent. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Again, let's see how he hits this with a low draw. Does he go all the way to the back rail? Well, he's going, he's. He's hitting this right into the side rail. I like how he's using that. He's not drawing the ball, but he's using side English. Look at the cue ball, still yeah, spinning. Right. He's got a little more English than I would. I like that better than drawing all the way to the end rail, back, all the way to the back rail and back. But he's still wound up on the back rail. He has to come with a shot here. But the European players and Asian players are very good at lagging ball. They think this is an easy shot on someone's cloth. In the old days, remember the wool cloth had the ball, <laughs> the, the wool balls and everything, and if you rolled something, it was like an adventure. It was an adventure because you had to play whether the table drifted or, or the right. cloth or something sticking out of the cloth might, you know, change the direction of the cue ball, that's for sure. Well, that's the that's why this cloth today, the Simona's cloth, it's an excellent, excellent cloth, the best cloth in the world to play on because you can be actually pretty accurate on it. Right. And he's got some work to do here. He's still got to break the stack up again. Mm -hmm. Seems Looks like to me like he played combination. Set, for the combination. I, I don't like combination for the combination. <laughs> but what does he get out of this? Let's see. I didn't like hell. He's got the two ball. I like avoiding combinations as much as... Yeah, me too. Only right? because I, I don't play him well. But he's okay. I mean, he's he's a great caliber. He's got a high gear. He's an excellent shot maker, so... Well, I, I don't know. He got a little funny here. He's got a mm -hmm. slight angle, but he needs to go into something or play position on the yeah. 8 right He's going to play for the 10, I think. Maybe draw back from 10. Well, I didn't like that. No. He's going to have to play the 3 in the side, isn't he? That looks like the shot, and then the one in the side. No. Okay, well, that must have been an optical illusion, John. It sure looked <laughs> to me like he could play that in the side pocket, didn't it? Didn't it to you? Yeah, but look at he sold out. This is what I don't understand. He left. Uh, he left John a nice shot here. No, this is the second time that his safety play has been subpar. You know, that's the only weakness that I've seen. I've seen right. this great creativity and running out balls. He looks excellent. His stroke is excellent. I love the way he hits the balls. The only weakness I picked out so far is his safety play. John missed that two ball. He did want to hit that two ball. This might work out a little bit better for him to develop a break shot here. He tried, but he quite didn't get all of it. No. Well, he can get one now depending on uh, he wants to hit this easy. Easy or hard? No. A little harder would have been better, Grady, huh? Yeah, now he's got problems with this. Wow. Well, um, I know what he's going to do is, and now he's going to try to run into the 15 with the cue ball and knock it to the other side for a right. right shot. If he does that, that will be a nice shot. Oh, no good. Look at how dangerous this is. Well, he looks. he looked away a little bit frustrated. Now he's going to make sure he makes this ball come up table. He'll have an option of playing safe if he gets too straight in. When that ball's in the rack, it goes to the head string spot. Well, right. here was, here's another. Well, he's got a shot here. One rail or two rails, Grady? 
I like too. I like too too. I like coming from behind the pack, but they've been going into the side rail here. Look at how close. Wow. Tell you what, we've called the problems with that kind of shot two or three times. Now this is interesting because you have to shoot over the line. And he's playing safe. Yeah, I would this kick is, this in and call safe. Yes, nice shot here. That's a nice shot. He had no choice here. If it was laying funny, you know, he could have elected to, to okay. do no. Now John things. is a pretty good safety player. What you have to do here is go two rails, hit the back of the stack at a slow speed, and just knock two or three balls loose, or one rail. One can. rail. I think one, one rail. Or and actually, he hit it pretty hard. He can get a rail. This is an excellent shot. Well, that's risky, though. It's, it's risky. Easy to sell out. It seems, it seems to be a pretty standard Let's shot. Let's see if we can play a decent safety here for a change. Got to be he, careful. He took a foul. Or took a foul. Okay. I believe he touched the ball, and John took a foul right back. The seven goes up in the far left-hand corner, so this is a little touchy. You can't just leave the cue ball on the lower mm -hmm. right-hand portion of the table. Well, he's elected to shoot away now. I, I See, again, I'd rather get on two fouls before doing this. Well, he's going to play the seven up in the corner. Yes, of course he is. He, he's left the shot. But, again, wouldn't you rather your opponent shooting this on two fouls than one? But exactly, right? Oh, I agree with your assessment about that. This is a very makeable shot. It's too easy. Oh, 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 oh. Um, that's another thing, too. I, I show people sometimes that when I'm teaching them that you don't want to completely roll balls. Guys that hit balls medium speed, defeat guys that are complete ball rollers. Don't you agree? I agree 100%, especially, especially on foreign equipment. And under pressure conditions. That was not a good speed selection. No. No, because you're really guessing instead of being Well, you, even with these Aramith Super Pro balls that are the best balls in the business, if you ask me today, you're going to get a ball that's out around once in a while. And if you hit it that easy, it's liable to roll off slightly before it reaches the pocket. Well, that's a factor. That, that could definitely be a factor. But I call it pooching the stroke myself. Because when you hit a ball that slow, you really don't go through the ball. And a lot of times, you ball skid on you, and it's a combination of not hitting the ball pure. Now, um, Ingrid only needs, he came to the table needing 41. That's uh, two racks and 13 balls. That's not many for a consummate pro like him and a straight pool expert. And he just made an excellent shot by knocking that ball away and making it the key ball. Right. Because now everything's out in the open. I shoot the 15. Shoot the, shoot the one ball now, come right back to the center of the table. Now, another thing I learned from Boss as far as he taught me that if you've only got one ball at the other end, go ahead and get rid of it. If you've got more than one, it's okay to leave them there mm -hmm. because that way if you get a little bit out of line, you have something that you can, exactly. you know, a, a little protection ball, so to speak. I was always taught also to get rid of the trouble balls as soon as you can. Sure, sure. But he seems, he's a, he seems to be nice and clear right now. Now he needs to make sure that he comes to the center of the table and keeps an angle, which he did, because he didn't want to get an, a bad angle on the five ball, because right. now he can go punch this ball to the rail and come back to the center of the table, or three quarters to the center.
coming to get these poems. Václav Dobica. Let's give Václav Dobica a round of applause, everybody. He's back in line, so let's see what he can get up here. Two ball could be a good break shot. He's still working right now. Right. He needs to start thinking about uh, creating a break shot and angles the way he can knock one of these balls out right here. Well, this could be the shot here. Well, the eight. Well, I don't know. Is that the eight or the... I think it's the eight. He's going to shoot the seven and move the eight over a few inches. He can back. actually, let's see this. Yeah, hit the top of it a little bit. Hit this with a well, little bit of a... He's the ball, looks like. I guess he's elected to Yeah, he's going to play 14, 8, 3, 2. Or, yeah, 11, 11 yeah, 2. 11, 2. That's so he's made it in his mind. He wanted to create a better break shot, but he'll settle for this. This is this isn't that bad. He just needs to see. He needs to see where he needs to get on the on the two so he can follow the cue ball to the rail. Right. One of the shots that remember the old days with the old cloth. Uh, one of the shots that's a lost shot is reverse and English off the rail that you can't do with Simona's cloth with the new cloth. You hit that ball with like a high right hand English in this case, and it would hit the rear rail, reverse, and go into the pack. Yeah. That's a lost shot because of the today's equipment. Now this one, I, I just like medium speed. I don't want to hit this too hard. Well, you do have to draw a little bit to come off the pack. You don't want to get stuck. See, he followed the ball, and it looks like he got stuck in there. Well, he's got some, uh, got a couple of shots. He's got the two ball, the 13, that's about the it. The 13's probably what he'll pick. If it's a bit of a yeah. cut, but if he takes the 13, uh, I really like going. He should uh, put a little bit of draw in there already. Come Let's out see. of that pack. Yeah, oh, I agree with you there. Yeah, he's got, look at him, he's disgusted right now. And he's got, he's, he's like definitely shooting. Here. Three rails and just twist it in the pocket. Yes, just make the ball. Right. Like that. He's fine. Nice shot. That comes from. That says nine ball sh shot making ability right there. Well, that's a standard one pocket shot, also. You and you, Slow go, you spin would go, it. Three, go three rails for balls that uh, you would. One rail, if it isn't natural. It, no, he hit it beautifully. Then he's on a run of 30 and has narrowed the gap somewhat. Well, tell you what, he's uh, he's definitely within striking range to take the lead here. Play the twelve ball. Two ball, I guess. One 
is next. Is it the one, or it looks like he's going into the 15? Uh, yep, you're right. Uh, he's okay. I like the one ball, too, to spread those balls out and come back. But, but I can't tell from this angle whether it's real or not. Well, if the 12 goes, he, he's okay here. Yeah, no, he had plenty of room. This might be a good shot. He wants to get an angle to stay high up there, so we'll create. Well, I like him shooting the 14 first, but all right, he went up into that angle. He had the angle already to go into those balls, but I would have liked to move the 14 first so he could have a pocket for these this balls. This is a little touchy, John. Huh? That's yes, it. it is. It got touchy now. There's some work to do. He needs a break shot also. Right. Well, he wants to move to three so the nine will go. And uh, if the, well, if the eight goes without moving that ball down close to the end rail, he might move that other ball that's by it mm -hmm. out for a break ball. I think he wanted to get up a little higher. He didn't quite get as high. Well, if the four ball's not in the rack, that'll be his break ball. And what he'll do here is play the 15, 9, 7, 14. But he, he didn't want to get, he wanted to get a little angle where he gets the cue ball he's off gonna, the rail. He's going to draw this cue ball. He wants to shoot, well, now he's going to shoot, force to shoot the 7 now. 7, 4. No, the four, I think, I think four is going to be a break ball. The four? Yeah, I it? think it's just out of the stack. No, he's Now it is. Right, now it is, right. Now it is. Now but it can just can float. can he kill this? He may have to play well, to cut the four. He just wants to hit this nice and easy. If he can hold his cue ball on the rail, and that's a good break shot. Well, if not, then he'll need to bounce up a right. little higher. Yeah, that's, that's a little funny. I'd a lot rather stay below the four if I could. He is. Whoops. Yep. That's a good shot. Is he all right? Yeah, he's all right. I don't know. He's kind of waving his hand. I don't know if he can. Where's his spot? High enough. left, and you hit the back of the stack like that. Perfect. Look at that. He hit that excellent. Nice stroke. You love that follow stroke, Grady. I'm learning this yeah. now. Yeah. Now he's going to have to play that ball on the side, whatever that is. I don't see anything else. I think that's 14. I just sense his medium speed. Well, he's looking to open the pack too a little bit. Yeah, well, you have to do that anyway if you just make it. Only problem is when you're breaking those shots, you need to make sure you have the next shot. Right. Well, that was a funny angle. All he could do really is sense it. Mm hmm. There's, ooh, he's all right. He's okay. He made it. He remembers that shot he missed in that corner the last time. This game's getting a little closer now. It's very interesting. John's going to run a 45. And of course, if it had been the old 150 point version, uh, Ingrid would have already been out. Mm hmm. I Not bad. He might decide to shoot this ball yeah. first. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Now we'll clear the path here. He's going to shoot the five ball if I see it correctly. And that one ball might become his break shot now. Yeah, it, it could. It's the best uh, side of the table for a right-handed player, and it's a little low on this day. Now, he got a little bit funny now because he went up table. All right, he'll shoot the lower ball, come out. It looks like he's going to go two rails with this. Yes. He wants to land on that seven. Somehow. Get that out of the way because right now he can shoot the seven, seven. three, the eight, That's the ten. That's one ball's the break yeah. shot. He would have liked to got up a little bit higher. Oh, he's fine. He's okay. But this is perfect. Come out for the eight ball. Perfect. Ingrid could be a little bit of trouble right now. 
Well, if, if John runs out here, I would say that Ingrid lost a match because of his poor safety play. Exactly, player. exactly. But don't forget, he did end, end his shooting. He still has 109 ball right in this match. That's Richie Florence, who was one of my best friends and, and passed away a few years ago, had the singular distinction of playing in the U.S. Open straight pool and having four runs of over 100. And uh, they lost all the games. <laughs> so. Was that because of safety play? No. Uh, or unfortunate. Just or, yeah, just one of those things. Your opponent just shooting back at you. Well, and John's he's, rolling along pretty good. He's here. rolling along. He seems to pick up steam a little bit. Seven more on the side. Now the 15 10. Let's come down and clear these balls down here. Was it? Uh, we'll go into now the. Now, see, this is smart. Rimpy would move the 12 before he shot the 10 because then mm -hmm. if something happened, he got stuck some kind of way like this, he wouldn't have to play a combination. Exactly. But he's. He's all right. He's got plenty of shots, but he could have gotten a little funny. Yeah, and he would have been forced to shoot a combination instead of shooting the eight straight in. And he's moving. Let's see now. Yeah, the six ball will be his break shot. Huh? That's not too close to the pack. I don't think so. Looks to me like he's out outside that string. He's certainly not laboring over his shot selection as he would be if it were in the rack, don't you think? Yeah, he's, uh, I would try to move, uh, move it away a little bit to get a better angle on the shot, better break ball. But I like 3 one 12 8 here. You just pull it back about a foot, like that. Mm, I would like to get a little steep angle than yeah, that. Yeah, me too. Me too. I think he did too. He just let's see now. He's forced to hit this hard and draw into the stack. Let's see. That's a nice little stroke. Yeah. Now here's what I like: 12, 5, 14, 15 to break him up. Does he get rid of that three ball first, or no? He'll go five, fourteen, and then go over. Well, the three might be a protection ball for him. Yeah. Well, look uh, at this. He's, he's looking, looking to see if the combo is dead. That might mm -hmm. work too. This is nice when you get into straight ball, and he's on a run of seventy-two. He's he's definitely in this match. He's gonna play the combination. Slow break out there. Yes. And he might elect if he has an angle on the two to shoot the two now to break open the eight nine. Right. Wouldn't be a thing in the world to matter with that. The thirteen no. is there for mm -hmm. position if necessary. And the side pocket shot. It's a beautiful game when you start getting into stroke and running balls. Well, one of the things I always liked about a World Straight Pool Championship is that you can be playing an Efren Reyes or a Steve Miserak or a John Smith, and you can have them seated, and it's the most beautiful feeling in the world when the referee says, 12 ball, 127. <laughs> and uh, playing for two, you know you've got them, and the whole room knows you've got them. You know, it's, it's just a nice feeling. Uh, the greatest. Uh, oh, he missed that eight nine. I don't know. Was he going up table? I think so. Yeah, no reason to. I don't think to go to those. Eventually, now. he's, he's got to get on that eight nine. Well, he shoot the thirteen, and then the fourteen would be to get on him. 
It's just a question of... Um, I liked him going into those balls earlier. He may have got a better break shot than the 11. That was what I was going to suggest. He can either play the 8 in the side mm -hmm. or the 9 in the corner, depending on... Well, it looks like he's going to have that 11 ball for the break shot. Right. Uh, yeah, the 11 is a break. Well, that's a foregone conclusion. Unless he falls on the 9 perfect to push the 8 out. Let's see how he gets this now. He's just going to come back and play for the 8 or the 9. Easy, 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 yeah, that's easy. That's okay. For John, this is not a hard shot. Yeah, but... Does he shoot the eight? Does he? No, I don't think the eight goes. He's going to play the nine with yeah. two rails. Well, he got a little further than he wanted. to. This is, this is the little trap that he got himself into by not moving those a little bit earlier. That's true. But we could see that right after math. <laughs> but uh, come on, baby. Nice. Oh, oh, look. Look how he landed perfect on that eight. That was not an easy shot. To hit the ball that easy, and with that touch, to land perfect on the eight. He's pistols. looking to see if he can reach it for a right-handed player, depending on where he leaves the cue ball. He's just going to try to draw this back to the center of the table, and out of the pack. Oh, nice shot. shot! Excellent shot right there. Well, look at this. Well, nice, right, nice. Four. And he's only four balls behind in the match. He's worked his way back into this match. Confidence to hit this back now. Excellent shot. He's okay. And look at this, a little bit more. That was smart too, because a lot of guys go forward with the cue ball there, and that's how you get in trouble with that angle. Well, he did the last shot. He shot. He went forward. Yeah, but yeah. that was a little different. Yes, it was a little different. I like them coming back like that. See these new shafts, you can use inside English on a shot like he just executed with confidence and accuracy. The old shafts had so much deflection that well, it shots was, like that were tough. It was tough, right. It was a dip. You had to gauge the roll, I mean, as far as a deflection. And there was a lot more, more factors into making a shot than today where... I say, I'm not sure I want to go into the balls here as I shoot the 15 ball. Or if I well, he's going to shoot the 3. That's I, a better shot. That's probably. a better shot because he hits the 1 and the 8. He just needs to be careful. Well, and I don't like, I, I'd rather go, he's not electing to go into the pack here, is he? I don't know. I wouldn't like it, but. Well, he did. He's all right. He can make the 5, but he, he could have gotten in trouble. Either. Oh, he's got more shots than that. He's okay. Now he'll he's shoot fine, the 5 and come right. back for the 10, though, is it? Run an 89 90. This is a 90 ball run. This is nice. We right. witness a hundred ball. We might witness 200 ball runs. And I would. In the uh, same match. Yeah, that's, that's very possible. I like the eight. Go ahead and have my break shot set up. Well, he has the break shot right now. He's, he's looking. He has a two ball for the break shot. He needs to clear the path of the one. He needs to get that one out of there. He might elect to draw into the eight right now, which he did. That's See, he wants to move here. that one ball. Yeah, that's true. Good call. Okay, he got rid of the trouble ball. Now everything goes. I like, I like this. You'd have to use the bridge to shoot the 10 ball. Uh -huh. I'll shoot over a ball to play the 14. He picked the natural route. He's okay now. It's... Oh, he didn't get up high. He didn't want to. Oh, at boy. This. Wow. Uncharacteristic error right there. To play the eight in the mm -hmm. He tried to get above it. He wanted to play the eight in the corner. He, he, he had a game plan in mind there. Low left is a tough shot. This, he should hit this with a low right. Well, low right. Yes. Is, well. I don't think he can play the six in the side. I don't know. Play the eight in the side here. Yeah, the eight in the side, but I mean, for his next shot. See, he used low right to play the six. That was excellent. Very nice. Very, Very nice. excellent shot. Good recovery there. Yeah. He definitely recovered there. That's 
what good shot making overcomes. Again, 14, play the 6 in the corner, and then the 2. 14, 6, 2. He's looking like he's want to be hit to six. I really don't like running no. into a ball here if he doesn't have to. I don't think he's going to. He's going to draw away no, from okay, it. Okay, he's fine. Yeah. He's just looking on the angle on the six to play the two next because he wanted to draw into the rail. He got two straight. He may, you know, he wants to get to the side, close to the side pocket as possible. Uh, he, a little straight, wanted to get closer. Yeah, this is uh He's got to okay, force this. No, no, He's got to hit this 100 miles an hour. And he did. Does he come out with a shot? No. Nope. No. But he's got an excellent save here. Wow. Run it. Look at this. 99. We almost had well, uh, two 100 ball runs in the you same. You know, that's something that I never understood uh, anyway. What's the distinction between 99 and 100? Is there something a, about the 100 is a yes, magic figure? Yes, it is. It is. Now he wants to, to go past the He's side just going to test this. Now, yeah. i got to like John getting the first shot. Well, based on what we witnessed. So based on what we witnessed, right. Uh, wow, well, what a match now. Uh, well, this is four. No, nah, that's this. I, 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 you know, uh, he's a likable fellow. I'd hate to be betting on him, though, and, and lose my money like that. Only because of the safety play. That's four bad safeties. Yes. Against a John Smith. I mean, John only needs 19. Wow. I'd be highly surprised if he doesn't get out here. Wow. Such, such a great, great shoot. And, and only, like I said, the only fault that I've seen has been his safety. Like I said, yeah, got to like John from there once he went, goes into a safety battle. Yeah. You know, I've played matches where Grady, I've played people for money, played straight pool, and never ran more than 14 balls, but I ran the 14, played safe, got the first shot, ran another 14, played safe. It was like running. Look at this, it's not over yet. Now, wow. Wow. he's playing the seven in the corner. He has no I'll see choice. if he hits it harder than the last seven ball he played in the corner like this. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow, wow. That's twice he missed that in that corner. Ouch. Ouch. Now, he may have lost this whole match. Well, sure. Here, that only shot need, right there. He only needs 30. Look at this. Look at this. He's all right. Well, we'll see you in a minute here. Looks like he overcut it. Oh. Oh my goodness. Well, if I'm John, I think I'm the luckiest guy in the world after wow. self-destructing and getting to return to the table the so quickly. shot he selected to shoot the six. I was shooting, well, I would have shot the combination. I thought that was laid a little easier than well, the after six. all this great play, and look at what we're watching here. Well. They've both been a little doggish, if you'll excuse my so phrasing it, towards the end of the match when they ought to be Concentrating on getting these last few balls. Ouch. Well, let's see who recovers first. This is a man, you know. Don't forget, John just came off a 100 ball run, a 99 ball run, and could have took something out of him. You know, after coming off of those big runs, I, I think we experienced both players losing a little something. I don't like this. No, he's going to have to lag this. Oh, behind the back. Oh, Nice. Well, very nice. We're here in a world championship match, and they're going behind the back. You know what's interesting to me about this, too? In 83, which was the first straight pool tournament I ever got to play in at age 40, uh, Steve Miserak ran 150 and out on me in the semifinals. And uh, the next day, he played Jimmy Fusco in the finals, and they didn't have a high run of 16 because the hot lights. You know, the television was there. The table got real tough. Light. Yeah, and uh, that's one thing. Pool uh, isn't the same as other sports. They don't do that at golf or tennis <laughs> or football or anything. Change the weather conditions. Change it completely. It was 100 degrees in that pit. Wow, look at this. But anyway, I'm very surprised that they're not finishing a little better than what they've shown us here. 
John needs 13. He's got the rack. Be careful. Wow. I've scratched on that brake shell a few times, haven't you? Yes, I have. And does he have this two ball? Well, it doesn't matter. This is an easy enough combo if he has yes. to do that. Well, I've seen... Uh, wow, what a, what a way to lose this match. Shooting the ball behind the back, jacked up over a ball. Yeah, but he, he lost a match if John gets out here with because his four safety bad safeties. Safety. Yes. John wants to fall on a break shot here, a little angle on the 11 to go into the stack, and now he needs to make sure well, like, after this yeah. he gets a shot. Yeah. Here's your force follow shot, Grady. And, well, he's I not, like he's going, not in, going into I like it. I going into the six. Well, he no, didn't go no, well, I guess the 514 yeah, must, must be go, dead. Sure. Okay, I didn't see that. I guess we snoozed that one. Well, the five breaks up the stack here, but he's got to cut it a little well, bit. He's going to draw into the seven here. Oh, a okay. little bit. Yeah. And he got the three ball out for a break shot. Or he could play the eight in the side and go two rails. In right two. now, all he's looking to do is run seven balls, Grady. Oh, that's right. That's he doesn't he need needs. a break shot or anything right now. Just. He just wants to fall on that three and spread those balls open. That's actually what he wants to do. He's going to come around the table, one, two, three rails, back to where the cue ball is. Well, either that or break them going two rails right now with the eight. Either way is all right. I you. like your shot better. Yeah, because he could shoot either the three or the five. Yeah, just like this. Easy, yeah. easy, easy, easy. Where's he going? Well, he's all right here. Uh, he wanted to make sure he went far enough. Yes. Well, he's all right now, but he's still got to come with a shot here. And he's fine. He's okay. I believe he got the seven in the side, and this will be the match. He makes the seven in the side. He picks off five balls. Everything's right there. And I'd leave the nine, ten tied up. One, six, five, thirteen, game. Yeah, he's playing for four. The six goes here, I think. Too. Yeah. You're playing the, oh, Once, playing the yeah. one first. Okay. I didn't see that the one went. That's a game set match. Game what a shame. Ingot played this match. I love the way he ran those balls, those 109 balls. And to give it away on poor safety, it's just a crying shame. It's just a crying shame. Well. I would venture to say, between you and me, my friend, that that's the worst safety I've ever seen. Is this the I've greatest thing you ever? Great is this the greatest sound playing for one? That makes it also when you have a hanging for two. Yes, playing for one. Great match. We witnessed two 100 ball runs. Well, actually, a 99, but which is just as good as 100. Just as good as 100. But great match, great. Well, enjoy Pleasure. working with you, John. Yeah, first and time. Thank you. We get to do some more in the, in the future. Yes, definitely. Well, let's thank Jorge again for having us and putting out this interesting new product.